Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is The Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. Beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. And it was a Doctoberfest weekend, Kat. I (laughs) know you were on Saturday. I know. I went down there in costume and (laughs) met you you in costume. And we had a picture taken, too, which we'll get on Facebook. Book in costume. Here. Yeah, yes. in costume, uh-huh. that's right. Yeah, uh-huh, it's, I told you. It's told so you I'd show up. It's more fun doing that, you know, when you do a theme, dress up. It's I know. More, you have so much more fun, and people don't realize it until it's too late. Oh, yeah, and then they go, oh. Oh, man, I could have done that. Dress up event? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then hopefully oh, yeah. you see them yeah. next year, like, dressed mm-hmm. in full regalia, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, there's always a reason to get in a costume for something. There's always a reason. Well, we're yeah. theater, so, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that's what I was telling Chris. I go, you know, we are in theater. So I was like, that's what you do when you, you entertain. You have no problem putting costumes. Different faces. It's so funny because she changes her look and different. Oh, During yeah. the Pirate Festival, you have to look Constantly. at her twice sometimes. It goes, that's you. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We go up on stage and we're doing our announcements. And then she's like, I got to change my costume now, you know. Right. Oh, it was just really cool when she did that. Yeah. I know, I yeah. know, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, Love that variety. Yeah, we were out with our later hosen and the dermals and all that good stuff. You looked great. It was that good. Yeah, yeah it was a great. Costume. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had a fun time. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was Very good. color coordinated. Yeah. What did you end up doing on Sunday? Anything you and Jason doing? What did I end up doing? I ended up doing absolutely like nothing, which oh, okay. was beautiful. <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> In its own way, nice things sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah you know, I ran a couple miles. I did some dishes. I I got ready for the week out of me, and sometimes that's just like the perfect Sunday for me. Right on. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm committed to. Yeah, yeah. just do what you want to do. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that it. Uh-huh. Kind of like what I'm doing here on Monday after yeah. the October festival. You know, we didn't end till eight o'clock Sunday night, and mm-hmm. uh, so that's when we tear down was and everything. So yeah, yeah I got hectic. home. And yeah, late, and then like I said, I'd get up, take Junior to school, and everything. So. Monday, you're feeling you guys it. will get this on one day, but let me tell you, Monday, Bruce took it easy. Yeah, you're feeling it this morning, I'm, I'm sure. I'm just yeah. relaxed. Yeah, my body's like, oh, being up and walking and all that. You sure. Know, you feel it. I skipped the gym this morning, and I don't feel guilty about it. Let's no. put it that way. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, pretty much that was my weekend, and Junior, he just did his groove thing, too. He actually hung with some friends and everything. He was burned out on the event. There was no candy booth and no toy booth, so he was well, not interested at all. Well, fair enough. <laughs> fair you enough, know. I said He knows him, what he likes. So he <laughs> kept himself entertained, and that mm-hmm. was groovy. <laughs> But that's what we did. There was so much going on the Fort Saturday. It was funny because there was like about five, six events. We were talking about it on the show last week. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so Saturday was, I think everybody got a little piece of the pie of everybody out here. But Sunday was all ours. No, mm-hmm. nothing else was going on. So it was funny. The Sunday crowd down there looked like the Saturday crowd yeah. would have looked on a normal Saturday if there wasn't a whole bunch of stuff going on. That's so funny. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. so cool. But Sunday, I, and the vendors were like, yeah, it was different today. And I was like, yeah, nothing was going on today. Just us. Love it. So it was mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. So, hey, hope everybody got out there and had fun. Because like I said, there was plenty of stuff to do this weekend. Oh, my gosh. All over the place. And uh, yeah, we got more stuff we're going to be talking about here, too. Before we go on the show, we'd like to thank the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, just the jeweler and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows out there that KCIW has, you just go to kciw.org and they will take you on your way. Well, hey, Kat, let's get into the music schedule. Yeah, there's still stuff going yeah, on in September. Bunch, yeah. There's lots of options out there. And we're going to start off at Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center. On the 21st, they're going to have comedian Ron Josel. Doors open for that at 730. The show starts at 8. Then on the 28th, they're having a truck giveaway event. And for information about that, you can go to elkvalleycasino.com. Over at their Warriors Bar and Grill, where music starts at 7.30 on the 20th and 21st, they're going to host Steve Nelson. Then on the 27th and 28th, it's going to be Lon Goddard. Yep, and then Cisco, he's playing on the 28th at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the Mighty Steelheads are playing on the 29th of September down at the House of Jambalaya in Crescent City, and that event starts at 1. Yep, and then the Italian guys on the 29th, they'll be at Augustino Wine Tasting Room at 3 p.m. And then Black GTO is playing on the 21st over at Tortuga Bar and Grill, running from 6 to 8 p.m. And on the 27th, they'll be at Porta Pints in Crescent City from 7 to 10. Yep, and then Stephanie Latore on the 20th, she's going to be at the Inateca at 8 p.m. Lon Goddard, he'll be on the 18th. He'll be at Kuntai at 6. And then on the 26th, 27th, the Elk Valley Casino. And we have some dates here over at Misty Mountain Brewing, where music runs from 6 to 8 p.m. 
On the 20th, they have Ross and Elephant Factory. That's a new one. And then on the 27th, Lawn Goddard. Yeah, that's a trip. Uh, mm-hmm. Exactly. Hey, I got to see the way outs here for the first time. They played at our thing on yeah. Sunday. I was going to say, I hadn't heard them before. I knew it was Mike Smith and Hollis Bullis, Tom, my buddy Tom. Uh-huh. And they played, and I got to finally hear them. But it was like, yeah, the way outs. I always loved that name, right. too. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Then we got Ranch Party on the 22nd. They're at Augustino's, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. They're doing some music there now. And I'll round out the month with Mike Powell playing on the 21st at the Grange Songwriters Showcase from 6 to 9 p.m. And on the 27th, he's going to be at Checo Brewing Co. from 6 to 8. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole lot of stuff still going on. Still plenty, and it's going to keep going into the holidays for sure. It will. All right. Well, let's take a look over at events at the Checo Library in Brookings. To start things off, they want you to know that September is National Library Card Sign-Up Month, and you're invited to celebrate with them. So in celebration of Library Card Sign-Up Month 2024, they're inviting everyone in the community to their week-long reading is sweet ice cream social. You can stop by the library anytime between September 16th and the 21st to sign up for a library card or to make sure your current library card account is up to date. And if you do that, you can have an ice cream or a popsicle on them. Just make sure to bring current proof of residence within the library district to sign up for a card. Examples include things like a driver's license or a utility bill. And again, they'll get you signed up. For weekly events on Mondays at 5.30 p.m., they've got their Spanish speakers walking group. This is a fitness and conversation group for Spanish speakers, and it will last as long as the longer days are lasting. I know that the sun is setting earlier in the day now, but for the rest of September, that's going to be 5.30 p.m. on Mondays. And then at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays, they have Story Time. Story Time features stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. They also have a chair yoga class on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. This is a beginner's yoga class that focuses on seated positions. And then on Thursdays at 1.30, they have another chair yoga class. Again, that's a beginner's class that focuses on seated positions. And then on Thursdays at 5.30, they have an easy flow yoga class. This is a yoga class for beginners that includes standing poses. It is highly recommended that participants be able to comfortably get up and down from the floor. And then on Fridays at 4 p.m. for the rest of this month, they're having Hora del Cuento. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in the Spanish language. And for other monthly and special events coming up at the library, on Wednesday, September 18th at noon, they're having a new discussion series called Lifestyle Medicine. You can join OSU Associate Professor Stephanie Polizzi for a free monthly community discussion on health, nutrition, and wellness. This month's discussion topic is the endocrine connection. Then on September 24th at 5.30, they have game nights at Checo Brewing Co., This is an open game night that features games from the Checo Library's growing board game collection, hosted at Checo Brewing Co. on Railroad Street. You're invited to try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites to share with friends. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community with plenty of table space to spread out. Kids are welcome, but they have to be accompanied and supervised by an adult guardian. And game nights happen every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then on Wednesday, the 25th at 1 p.m., they've got their monthly free art workshop with Tori. You can join volunteer and local artist Tori Bowen for a free hands-on art workshop. Materials for that are always provided, and this workshop is geared toward adult artists and crafters. And then finally, for programs on Thursday, September 26th at 4 p.m., they have their monthly Lego Club. Lego builders and enthusiasts of all ages are invited to a free open building session in the library's youth section. They also have a couple of book clubs left, and coming up in September on the 18th at 6 p.m., they've got their SOC Pride Book Club. This book club is geared toward older teens and adults. It meets to discuss books which focus on LGBTQ plus characters and topics. And then on September 19th at 5.30 p.m., they've got their Pub Grub Book Club. This casual book club is for adult fans of graphic novels. It takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Brewing in downtown Brookings. And all library-led event programs and events are free to attend, whether or not you have a library card. For more information, you can visit checkolibrary.org and check out their events calendar, or you can give them a follow on Facebook, or you can always give them a call at 541-469-7738. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff going There's on. There's a lot the of library. stuff happening. <laughs> the library is grand. <laughs> There's always something going on. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah. Hey, here are a few quotes from actress Greta Garbo. She was born on September 18th, 1905. And here's what she says. 
If only those who dream about Hollywood knew how difficult it all is. She goes, uh, life would be so wonderful if we only knew what to do with it. The story of my life is about back entrances, side doors, secret elevators, and other ways of getting in and out of places so that people won't bother me. And then last but not least, if you know anything about Greta Garbo, her last quote was, huh, I want to be alone. <laughs> 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 Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Greta Garbo with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, she was mm-hmm. famous for that. Yeah, I want to be alone. <laughs> I guess she didn't want to be a... Yeah. 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 Like her privacy. To her stuff. Yeah. Fair kept enough. to herself. And usually, as an actress or actor, you know, it's like oh. you, you want to be a, you know, that's the whole idea. Life of the party. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, everyone. I I Not everyone. Not <laughs> everyone. Not everybody's like that. Right. All right. Well, hey, All Care Health is uh, hosting a series of tobacco cessation workshops. Uh, the theme around that is Let's Quit Together. And this is starting on the 24th in two locations. On the 24th, it's going to be at the Checo Library in Brookings from 4 to 5 p.m. And then on the same day, if you're closer to the Gold Beach area, it's happening at the Curry Library in Gold Beach. That one's happening from noon to 1 p.m. That's open to all community members. Each workshop has six one-hour sessions. You can pick up some great tips on how to deal with urges and triggers and how to make healthy choices for you or someone else. And to register for those workshops, or if you have any questions, you can always call Sandra at 541-471-4106. Their extension is 8216. Nip. Whole family smoked everything like that and never took it up. I just it, Good for just, you. It didn't work for me, you Good know. For you, yeah. It's so funny because I remember taking road trips mm-hmm. and both my parents would be smoking and I'd be in the back seat turning green, and, you know, because the windows are right. up or something like that because it's winter or raining yeah. or something. And I'm sitting there dying. And they're like, Bruce always gets car sick. I'm like, I'm like, gee, I wonder why. You know, it didn't click, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. man, I was one of those kids. And I think that's why I just had no desire to smoke. You yeah, know you what I mean? You might be onto something there. Stuff made me sick. Yeah. yeah no yeah, kidding. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, good for you for never picking that up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, yeah, and the Checo players at 1240 Checo Avenue, they're presenting The Weir. This will be going on from the 20th of September to the 6th of October. Friday and Saturday showings are 7.30 p.m. and on Sundays, 2 p.m. In a remote country pub in Ireland, newcomer Valerie arrives and becomes spellbound by an evening of ghostly stories told by the local bachelors who drink there. With the wind whistling outside, what starts out as a blarney soon darkens as the tales drift into the realm of the supernatural. Then, Valerie reveals a startling story of her own. Oh, Valerie's got something up her sleeve. They have a special night on this opening night, which is on September 20th. They got a complimentary banquet with champagne. Warning, there is adult language and content in this play. And then there's $15 for adults and $7 for students. There are three ways to secure your seat. You can visit checkcopp.booktix.com, buy tickets at the door, or you can call 541-469-1857 for reservations. Mm -hmm. The weird. I never heard of that one. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sounds sounds pretty creepy. Sounds interesting. Yeah. All right. The Pelican Bay Church, located at 130 Blueberry Lane in Crescent City, is presenting a family fun festival. This is happening on the 20th of September, 5 to 7 p.m. And they're going to have hot dogs, root beer floats, popcorn, a good news club maze, bounce house games, a petting zoo, wagon rides, arts and crafts, prizes, and lots more, they say. And for more information about that event, you're always welcome to call 707-464-9184. They say it's a free event. All are welcome to attend. They cool Blueberry Lane. I like Blueberry. that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Hey, and Stage Lights Songwriter Showcase. This is happening on the 21st, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Chetco Grange. This is their annual event to showcase the local singer-songwriters. It is a family event. They encourage parents to bring their kids to share in a musical experience that will hopefully inspire them to take up music, too. Their lineup includes Janessa Gabriel. She played down there at the Doctoberfest. Very cool. Very cool seeing her. John Marshall, Bedford Smith, Tony Land, Kim Devine, Larry Fries. Lon Goddard, Don Beckner, Mike Powell, and Alan Hennings. Light refreshments will be offered for sale, and they'll be having drawings throughout the evening for some great prizes. Stage Lights is a 501c3 nonprofit since 2009, dedicated to offering opportunities for music education and enrichment to the community and beyond. 
All right. And then coming up in Crescent City, they're having a classic longboard surf competition on the 28th of September. Uh, This is going to be happening all day long on the 28th from about 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Redwood Parks Conservatory is proud to present this two-day longboard surf competition and festival with the Crescent City Harbor District. Uh, Again, invited for two days of thrilling longboard surfing action at South Beach. It's going to include live music vendors and a beer garden at the harbor overlooking the beach. And it starts on the 28th. It's also going on September 29th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. And the official festival hours for each day is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this event is for all longboard enthusiasts. You can show off your skills, catch some waves, and compete against other riders in a friendly and fun atmosphere. And don't miss out on the chance to ride the waves and enjoy the sun with fellow longboarders. And hey, now it's time for a bit of real history with Bushwhacker Bruce. G'day, Kat. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of real history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know... A famous composer was almost killed in a duel by another famous composer? It's true. And here's the story. In 1703, composer George Frederick Handel chose to move to Hamburg. Here he took a position as violinist and harpsichordist at the opera M. Gensemarkt. And it's also here where he met Johann Matheson. Most famously known as a music theorist, Matheson was a man of many talents, taking lessons from a young age in a keyboard instruments, violin, composition, and singing. With these skills, it was only natural that Matheson would come to compose a number of musical works himself. Well, one of Matheson's musical works, Cleopatra, premiered in 1704. Conflict arose when Handel refused to relinquish control as a conductor back to Matheson. It was busy singing for one of the saints. Well, tempers flared, and it wasn't long before one of them challenged the other to a duel outside. Well, a crowd began to gather as a sword swung left and right, clanking over sounds of birds and people murmuring. The two men deftly handled their swords, exchanging blows in a flurry of strikes. Well, at the height of the duel, Matheson found an opening and lunged his sword toward Handel's exposed chest. Certain that he was mortally wounded, the crowd gasped in surprise at the sight of Handel, still standing, seemingly unscathed. Well, it turned out that a large metal button on his cloak deflected the strike, saving his life from what should have been certain death. Well, the men came to their senses after this, deciding to end the conflict and even reconcile. Over the years, the two men became lifelong friends, sending letters back and forth long after they went on their separate journeys. Over the course of his life, Handel would go on to write 42 operas, 25 oratorios, more than 120 cantonatas, and many more musical works, before passing away in 1759. In the long, it proved that the pen was mightier than the sword. Hope you enjoyed this week's bit of real history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, always keep it real. Yeah. Thank you for that change out, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the real thing. Oh, yeah. no, I got so much more info now. <laughs> I was going to say, like, when you just make one little pivot from, like, you know, no, no, true history, real history. <laughs> yeah, go with the real Yeah, And then I saw that one, and it was like, I just saw it on the Mysteries and Monuments or something. I was like, hey, that's a good one, you know. Really good one. Yeah. Well, lucky. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we were going to do an announcement about Sylvia from Three Penny Theatre Co. opening October 4th through the 13th, but we now need to pivot and we need to make an announcement that that production is getting moved back to the second and third weekend in November. Unfortunately, live theater is done by real humans and sometimes unforeseen emergencies happen to those real humans. And so the part of Kate is getting recasted and is going to be played by the very talented Lisa Calvey based out of Gold Beach. So she's going to be coming down filling the part of Kate and we're going to push that back to November instead and we'll be getting the word out to people who reserved in advance and get folks rescheduled in the coming week here and we'll just go from there but um, yeah we'll be getting updated information out in the October edition of the Insider Report and we'll be getting all of our social media channels updated as well but yeah 
stuff happens, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, I'm really sorry that happened to you, person who couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. It's really so, about uh, sometimes when it goes down, but it's going to be a fun one. But and like, you so- know what? It's going to be an incredible production. It's been going so well. Everyone who's in the cast who is is wishing the person who couldn't do it had the absolute best. And we're just we're plugging along and everyone's still doing a great job. So. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, second and third weekend of November. And we'll be rolling that out later on this fall. And the way you can look at it is with that extra rehearsing going on, it's going to be even, it's going to be fabu. I know. I was already feeling like a very polished yeah, labradoodle, yeah. and I can be an even more polished labradoodle <laughs> for everyone's entertainment purposes. That's yeah. right. That's right. And also, it'll be the Insider Southern Oregon had it in the, mm-hmm. the uh, September issue. It was in there, but we'll have the change up in mm-hmm. the October issue as yeah. well. So Updated. you guys will have it all remind you about it, and everything yeah. will be groovy like nothing happened. Updated info there. And, yeah, and of course, <laughs> anybody who has any questions about that, they can always Always reach out. Our emails yeah. contact at threepennytheater.com. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Feel free to, to send us a message. We'll chat with you some more. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, and Gold Beach Main Street is presenting the Legends Fest. This is going to be going on at the Curry County Fairgrounds and Events Center up there in Gold Beach. Uh, it'll be on the 4th and the 5th of October. We're going into October now. Noon to 10 p.m., live music, vendors, a beer garden, food trucks, lots of fun activities. They include a bounce house, a giant bubble station, the dunk tank, axe throwing for kids and adults. Mm-hmm. I gotta get a hold of some of these people. Face painting plus more, Bigfoot encounter stories, Hathaway Jones and other tall tales, art contest, photos with Bigfoot, and karaoke. There's an entry fee of $15. Kids 12 and under are free. For more info, you can go to Mm legendsfestgoldbeach.com. There's some Bigfoot action going on there, too. Indeedy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a WHO Fair coming up. That stands for WHO stands for Wholeness, Health, and Oneness. Happening on the 5th and 6th of October from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Down at the Harbor Shopping Center. That's 97895 Shopping Center Avenue. To explore energy, abundance, and vibration, there will be tarot readings, Reiki sessions, sound experience, Akashic records, and much more. And for more information about that event, you can email Himalayan Harmonious Healing at gmail.com. Cool. I'll have to Google Akashic Records. Uh, the other ones I know about, but that one I'm not familiar with. All right. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> hey, uh, Curry Public Library, located 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach, is presenting Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry will meet the third Wednesday of every month from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for the program, you can email them at memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not often limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. All right. And KCIW has an ongoing soapbox series. And in this series, KCIW gives folks a chance to speak their mind. Again, it's called the KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW offers two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. There are a few rules, of course. There's no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks are welcome to share what's on their mind. The studio is open for recording those sessions every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. And that's for people to come on in and record. Give you an opportunity to get it out there. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then we got game night at the Whimsical Griffin, located at 615 Chetco Avenue, right next to the Redwood Theater. This is happening on Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. We got Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, board games, and more. There you go. Mm-hmm. And as always, Meals on Wheels is looking for some volunteers. Yeah. If you'd like to do something that will make you and those you help very happy, if you would like to do something to help give back to the community you love, if you would like to help out your fellow human beings, well then Meals on Wheels is looking for you. By delivering a hot meal to those who are homebound, you not only help someone who is hungry, but you also bring a bit of kindness into their lives, a friendly face for them to see every day, and social contacts that they may not have otherwise. There are three routes that deliver hot meals to about 60 seniors on a daily basis. Each route takes about an hour and a half to complete. You can volunteer by the day, the week, 
bi-weekly, bi-monthly, even if it's just one day a week, one day a month, whatever works for you, every little bit helps. If you're interested in helping in this great cause for the community, you can contact Meals on Wheels coordinator Debbie at 714-423-9797. Yeah, very good cause, very cool. Hope this is helping. Get out the word out there and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really good thing. Yeah, Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Always, boys and girls are invited. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from fifth grade to the age 17. Uh, adults are able to volunteer as long as they're over 21 years old and are able to pass a background check and are willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at Scout Hall, 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can go meet the troops and learn more about what Scouts can help you achieve. Scout Hall is located at 414 Desaya Park Road in Brookings. Troop 32 Scoutmaster is Mark Hagelin, 541-661-2749. And Troop 4032 Scoutmaster is Rebecca Wilson, 707-951-3647. All right, we've got a little PSA here yeah. from Southern Oregon Coast Pride. They have Queers and Allies Brookings get-togethers happening. They happen third Saturdays of the month. At the moment, they're taking place in the Checo Library's Forest Room. Again, that's third Saturdays of the month that they meet from 2 to 4 p.m. Target age range, typical age range is uh, 9 to 19, and it's hosted again by Southern Oregon Coast Pride. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Hey, Fog and Fine Art Gallery, located in Wright's Custom Framing Art Supply at 810 at Checo Avenue. The gallery features 36 local artists in a variety of mediums and a classroom to inspire new and seasoned artists with workshops. Stop by and enjoy all this new in the gallery, open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday, and Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. For more information on class offerings and painting demonstrations and artists, you can call 541-469-7900, or you can visit them on Facebook at Wright's Custom Framing. All right, we'll round out with the community kitchen schedule. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, it's at St. Timothy's from noon to one. On Wednesdays, it's at the Star of the Sea Catholic Church from noon to one. On Thursdays, it's at the Presbyterian Church, noon to one. Fridays, it's at the Lutheran Church from noon to one. And then on Saturdays, the first, third, and fifth Saturdays is hosted by St. Timothy's from noon to one. And on the second and fourth Saturdays, the Church of the Nazarene hosts from noon to one. And then rounding out the week on Sundays, St. Timothy's hosts a early dinner or late lunch, however you like to view it, from 3 to 4 p.m. You can also find the community kitchen schedule in full at kciw.org. Well, it's been a while since we were able to get all pages in. We got everything in on that one. We did it. (laughs) And we did it. But now we got the fly and fickle finger of fate from the producers so it's time to close out this week's show and before we go i'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers ray and tom for all their great work making us look and sound good on the radio i want to thank you all for tuning into this week's insider report and please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to kciw 100.7 fm and catch all the fine shows that they have to offer you can catch all the fantastic show podcasts including the insider report by going to kciw.org and while you're there hey check out the live streaming as well Well, hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off. Please support local businesses. Keep it real and spread the love and peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll we'll see see you out out there. there. Bam! Bam. (laughs) Yeah. You made it. That took me a minute. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.